So anytime that you have division, it is a power play. Division of ethnicities, races, things that were never... Like, it's good to have distinction. There's a difference between distinction and division, okay? Distinction is like you can tell the difference between red or blue or yellow or orange. And I use colors because we don't sit there and be like, oh, the yellows have superiority over blues or greens. Like, there's going to be a, a, a place for those who lean towards yellows and be a place for those who lean towards blues. It, those are just coding and grouping. Um or sorting and grouping methods. It's not meant to tear apart, cause friction, um, and that sort. Now, there are times where you do have to be set apart and you do not have to go with the status, you're, you're not meant to go with the status quo. You're not meant to follow um, just because everybody else follows. There are times for that, but you have to understand that Division is because there is perversion. And perversion takes things out of its original context. And that's essentially what it is. So with that being said, we're going to get into this topic of unifiedly divided. And um, there is another disclaimer that there is a few disclaimers I'm going to put out there first. Um, so just give me a minute because this one is pretty extensive. So I'm definitely going to be referring to the notes. Okay. So... This was actually a, a topic that I went into meditation about, prayer about, and it's because I was severely, like, my spirit was bothered by it. I was severely turned off by this topic. And it's something that you see, especially in social media, it's something that you see in this world so prevalent right now, and it's annoying. <laughs> For me, it's annoying. And does it have a place to address issues? Yes. Um, the first step to solving a problem is first admitting that there is one and acknowledging it. So it does have a very essential place in saying, okay, this is an issue, but there's rhetoric behind it. And I'm going to take my personal feelings out of this so much. It seems like the rhetoric behind it for me, and I'm not the only one, I'm sure, is that it's a topic of pointing at what someone else needs to do over really understanding the foundation. First of all, it's a loss of foundation. Second of all, there's an, a more of a pointing fingers at the other party than there is an internal, okay, this is what I need to do to solve the issue. Because when you understand that we are all connected, and when you understand that even though you're, you're a small pebble, once you put it, you know, this is a old, proverb in so many different ethnicities and um, and um cultures but when you understand when they, you drop a small petal in a pool of water there is a ripple effect so every each and every one of us has a part to play in this whether we want to admit it or not whether we take responsibility for it or not um so i do want to start off with this disclaimer that um Unifiedly divided is going to be a topic between the war between men and women. There is a war between men and women, especially here in America. Well, I mean, if you look globally, there's this attack on women in general, like as far as, and and then there's attack as, and the simultaneously as there's physical attacks on women increasing, you're also hearing this attack on masculinity and manhood at the same time, especially here in the Western side. Um, and with, these two things being an attack, it is ripping the fabric apart of what the original structure system was meant to be. Now, I'm going to use this one's going to be in terms. Um, this is this may be a multi part series, and I will record them as I get them. This one I have just been down, I mean, I have been downloaded, it only got downloaded in part, and then the rest of it came later at, um, through prayer, fasting, all that stuff. Um, so I do want to make mention that this is not for individual truths. Everyone has their own opinions and their own individual take on it that is perfectly fine. I'm not here to argue anybody's individual take whatsoever. This is just simply to lay down what the framework originally looked like and what it's supposed to be like by natural laws. 
just like there's a natural law to the way everything works in nature there's just natural laws that you cannot refute that will be the case no matter where you go and that's just that now granted yes do we have technologies and our and findings to you know refute natural laws yeah and that that I'm not gonna get into because that's gonna be like a debate on personal preferences more so than anything um and then also religion individual beliefs all that stuff I'm not getting into that but there's this is just as seasons as practical as seasons change as red is red blue is blue as you know there's a spring summer winter fall <laughs> there there this is just basic groundwork facts whether you, you believe it or not whether you disagree or not that is your personal opinion i'm not here to argue with that you are entitled to it it is your right to have it and if the most high gives you a right to a personal opinion and free will to decide what you do according to your own internal guidance and compass of wherever you get your source from, wherever you get that from, your own personal beliefs, whether it's from your higher power, it doesn't matter. I'm not here to argue with that. You have that right. Let me make that absolutely clear because there's going to be somebody who might say something. You have that right. You have that right. It is your it is your God-given higher power right as a natural person on this earth, in this plane, in this being, that is your right to do that. You have free will. You have, you have deciding will over whatever you would like to believe, stand fast in, and all that. So with that being said, and if you feel like this goes against it, then that, again, that's your right. I'm not here to argue with it, nor will I argue with it. I will not. It's, there's, there's, like, a, this is just what this is. Um, this isn't really, I usually have a lot of discussion topics. This is not a discussion topic as much as it is, hey, this is a problem. Here, here's how it was meant to be. Do with that what you will. <laughs> You're going to do whatever you want to do with it. I'm just here saying, hey, you know how everybody's been calling this color uh, blue this entire time? Well, guess what? Extensive testing has been done. Praying and fasting has been done. Downloading has been done. Reading of the books has been done. And this is what has been discovered is the fact that's not blue. It is actually purple. <laughs> that is that. So... I mean, but you can still, you still have the, you still have the wonderful option to be able to call it blue all that you would love to. Nobody's taking that right away from you. So with that being said, um, <laughs> that was, that was disclaimer number one. There's a couple of disclaimers in here. Um, I'm writing this again because I find the war highly irritating. It's like, I, I don't take pleasure in division. It, and 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 what I mean by division, like I, I don't take pleasure in divide and conquer because that's what it is that's essentially what it is and i do not i do not subscribe to anything that is to distract from a solution a place of peace and then robs and then robs a collective of their peace of mind of Piece of living, piece of just whatever. It's because that's all it is. It's a divide and conquer tactic to get rid of peace. Um, and peace does not mean in constant agreement. Peace means inflow. And especially in this case, I find it spiritually the division. I find spiritually exhausting and taxing. And like I said, it does go against peace. And in my quest to heal people and see people to their highest selves, not only myself, and to dis depart some of the wisdom that I'm getting as I'm on this journey of me and the adventure of me, as I said in s several videos. So in my quest to help people heal, as I'm on, as I'm learning different healing methods, I am imparted to share. It is, and as I always say, this is something that you can use it great if you can't. Okay. Um, but this, this one is still a in that quest but it's just in my findings also just me presenting re um what i have learned in my findings um uh, for this particular one so this was not really so much a discussion topic or a debatable topic it's just simply in 
my quest to solve and to find an answer to this revolving issue that seems to be growing, this is what I found. This issue is too grand to be ignored. And I find people are very passionate about it. And any issue that incites a level of passion that starts to change the mindset or the way that the way that a collective moves should be addressed or should be acknowledged. So we're giving this issue a stage and I don't like to because I feel like this just projects the issue even more but at the same time it needs to it needs to be stated so that it can get the proper light shined on it so we can deconstruct it and really piece it pick it apart because it's really really it really needs to be picked apart because there's a lot more things at play than surface level and you have to look at the nuances of it to really understand what all is being done to incite this issue and then i feel like then and only then can you really make a proper stance in it because you've done the you've done what you need to do you've really looked at the issue you've really studied to see where what each thing is coming from so you can address each thing head on it's not to just look at it and study and say oh okay we looked at it we did all the tests and we found out is this it's now there's a second part of addressing it and doing whatever needs to be done to heal from it individually and then also collectively so with that being said that was a long first part of a disclaimer <laughs> first address this and this is this should be something so obvious but I'm realizing and this is not to play down the intelligence of anyone I'm realizing that common sense is not always common that's a saying that's here excuse me in the states but it really is true it's like it's not com all sense all ways of thinking is not always common among a collective so um I'm just simply after re looking at this and watching this thing unfold, this is just, um, now do some, each party have some good points on them? Yeah, but you mean, I feel like this, you could put a whole bucket of water out there, like a two gallon, or let's say a gallon a bucket of water, you put a few drops of arsenic in it and it's still poisonous. So, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, some of it's very valid perspectives that do need to have its own individual attention, but at the same time taken too far and out of balance and perverted out of original intent it can be detrimental and most likely will be detrimental um and the but one thing that is very common in this war is the whole thing is filled by these what i mean when i say this is it is very important that these topics are addressed but when they are addressed in certain a certain way, it can be more harmful and detrimental than it can be helpful. And because a lot of these arguments that are being placed, and this is me not taking side with any of them, because honestly, I don't take side with any of them. They all have good points. They all have very detrimental points. Um, but with that being said, it's really all fueled by confusion internal wounds per person based off of their experiences wounds so hurts and pains based off of their experiences their um what they've been through in life blamescaping <laughs> so putting again pointing fingers at the other party saying you 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 and you and you and because of you so and that's not taking accountability to because you can't, you can make known what the other party does, but at the end of the day, you have to go back into you and think about what you have done, what, how you add to the problem. Because you can only control you. Um, and that's that Bible proverb of 
you're pointing out a twig in someone else's eye, but you have a whole forest of tree trunk. It's really tree trunk, but in some cases, it's a whole forest growing in yours. So, blamescaping and pride. Those are the biggest things that you will see in this. So, you've got confusion, wounds, lack of accountability, blamescaping, and pride. And... This also does not just play into the war between men and women. It is right versus left, politics, Democratic versus Republican, race, one race versus uh, one race or ethnicity versus another, um, rich versus poor. It is in everything. And it is the old tactic of divide and conquer. And if you cannot see it as that, then you are playing into its hand. That's what I've noticed in it. Some of it will be my perspective, and I will do my best to differentiate when it's my perspective and when it's what I've been studying. Um, so, again, the war between men and women is that it's so prevalent on social media. You hear it in everything with the red pill, pink pill, all the pills. Um, and then you got, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's gotten to a point where it's, it's grown so big that it's ridiculous. Um, I stand by my statement. Most men aren't proper men today uh, for multiple reasons. They haven't had the proper father figures to show them how to be men or society and feminism and social media has completely warped their sense of man. That's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive. You gotta endure. People are too... You wanna stick in people relationship? People are just... See, I mean, look, people I'm nowadays be are just... For not only does this clown say sh like this, he also talks about wanting to hit women. The red pill movement is imploding because its thought leaders are endorsing men like this. The Black Church is basically a normalized version of the Alpha Male podcast. I want you to check out these two videos. She says, I got a good job. I make very, very good money. And she says, the only thing I need now is a man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yo like, <laughs> it's like who wants you who wants you you, you right. right like once you have achieved these things you have unfortunately disqualified yourself bishop pdj i know you can buy your own car i know you can buy your own house but until you create a need that i can pour into i have no place communicate that in order for women to attract men they have to make themselves small the blue pill is the modern sort of big programmed popular script these western degenerate countries the blue pill is this idea that to get girls all you need to do is be nice they've convinced men that the way to attract women is to be feminine it's to open up it's to talk about your emotions it's that men cry you know they've taught these things and i'm not like mocking like men crying or something mental health is a serious thing but to attract women absolutely not to attract women this is like a false program that's been pushed into all the young men a lot of men it. like women but they don't like feminine energy because feminine energy leans on masculine energy and you need to be masculine to be able to deal with that shit. Because let's think about it, at the surface, a woman is very playful, she's very intuitive, she's very empathetic. A lot of women don't accept the reality that men take respect over love Absolutely. any day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any day, every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Respect me before mm -hmm. you love me. And then women position themselves where it's like, well, I'll take safety over love. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're, as long as I feel safe with you, I don't have to be in love with you. Cause I'll, I'll marry the man that I respect before I marry the man that I'm in love with. You know what? Who, who you say that out loud? She ain't lying. That, that makes some sense. Yeah, no, she didn't lie. Men on the flip side don't want a woman that's saying, I don't need you. Ooh, I make my own money. So what do I need you for? No, wait, can I ask you a question? What is the problem with I don't? I don't need you to function in my life, but I do desire you, I do love you, I do want you, but I do not need you to fuck. Oh, SD, what's I up, mean, SD? So you talking that up on the on the humble okay, because that's okay, not okay. that's and and a lot of times I don't even fall in line with the traditional conversation, but like that's not how that badge gets worn. Okay, how does that it badge get worn? doesn't get worn as I don't need you, but I love you. It's I don't need you because you trigger something in me that validated what I thought about y'all all along, y'all all along. And, and I am making this known because if, for me, 
it was an it was high being highly irritated like my spirit was bothered by this war and being irritated because i do love to live in balance and peace as much as possible and anything that disrupts that because even outside of myself i can i can say i can carry peace with me but there are going to be like some things that are outside of external forces that will try to disrupt it and it's a constant effort of trying to keep myself in balance um as, and to strengthen that muscle as much as possible and um this is also for those who want to be healed, who don't want to live in the opposition of, and this specific one we're talking about is men versus women. And there are people who don't want to be in the midst of this, but kind of are thrust into the midst of this because there are a lot of people who subscribe to these viewpoints that are detrimental to not only that are detrimental to society. They are. It's like, yes, address it. Yes, say that this is happening. But when you stay stuck in that um, hurt space, um, what's that saying? Hurt people hurt people. And when you are not doing your part into healing the wounds within you that add to this collective mindset, then you are part of the problem. So with that being said, this is for those who want to heal from the problem <laughs> and those who do not want to heal from the problem, who want to study it, the problem, who want to just give more facts to the problem. This is not a space for that, really. Th not this one. This one's not that space for that. This is, this, I, this is more so, yeah, I heard, I've seen that issue too. And this is the way that I'm trying to heal from it kind of space for, this is where, this is the space we're creating with these videos. Um, Anybody who's like, yeah, but you know, what about this and what about th that? If you're trying to nitpick the situation, if you're trying to point more fingers, go. There's plenty of people who are on platforms who have those topics. This ain't it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm just gonna call it like that. You could, your comment will sit. It ain't it. Thank you for the comment, but it will sit and it ain't it. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I am gonna ruffle some feathers with this. <laughs> Because I got something to say about both sides. It I'm not taking side to any side. Uh, yes, I can be a girl's girl, but sometimes I can be a guy's girl. Sometimes I'm just a girl. You know, I'm just sitting in the middle. I'm like, that side's doing them, that side's doing them. I don't agree with either one of them. Um, so, uh, and I'm going to bring some pain points that happen with men. That I'm, because, and I have grown, grown up in a predominantly male family. And that's just my upbringing. And then on top of that, so it's like I get the front row seat to a lot of these problems. Now, and then I've had plenty, multiple male friends too. So it, it's this isn't just coming from, oh, things are made up. And this is also things that I'm hearing when, when you surf on the net and you're you're kind of being pulled into this war. And you're like, oh, wow, okay. that's that. It's, it's just kind of like this, whether you, if you surf on it, um, any TikTok long enough, YouTube long enough, Instagram long enough, any of the social media platforms, if you search on them long enough, you like a thing about a relationship, stat, like people talking about relationships, you're going to end up getting pulled on one side or the other of this war in, in, in your algorithm somehow or another. <laughs> so if, and if you have not, then you just have not been on social media long enough and good for you. Um, so I want to bring up some pain points for men uh, and and women. So some of them being that, and I'm looking at my notes here, um, no longer invest in uh, the value of yesteryears. So that's one. Um, men feel disrespected and women feel rejected. And it could also be vice versa. I feel like that statement is vice versa. And the reason why I say that that way, even though it can be flipped, I'm saying it specifically this way because men attribute their love to respect so much. And women, it's more so about this acceptance of loving. It's like loving for her for who she is, what she brings, what she, what she, her essence is. So the reason why I say it that way is very attuned to 
how the difference the differences of the sexes love and i don't want to say sexes because it's not just bound by sexes it's also bound by if you're if you lean more into your masculine if you lean more into your feminine um so you won't hear me say women men as much even though that's in the title it is more so just um and this and the, this is not to support other people's belief on what a traditional relationship looks like nor to not support it I'm neutral in that. I have my personal beliefs, but again, this is not a space for personal beliefs. So if I am not going to invite anybody else's personal beliefs, I'm not going to flood it with my own either. And as I said, that this can be flipped it flipped as well. So women, there is also the narrative of there's women who are rejecting men and men who are disrespecting women who also got us here as well too. So we all are very well aware that three decades from now, men and women didn't have the same place in society and as of now there there has been a shift where women have come up to more of an equal status of men in society in a sense of now the um pay rate gap and everything there's still there's still work to be done definitely but at the same time or the wages of the wage gap um but the same time with all this work that still needs to be done it's still a far cry from where we were when we were still being signed over as property um for men and i want to just put this out here because there are a lot of different cultures that still practice women as property um they gonna do what they do uh but it was never meant to be that way and i'm gonna digress because this is not that kind of video. Well, it is, but I'm gonna back. I'm gonna kind of go back to it in a little bit. Because I'm not trying to be here to argue that either. Every culture, they're again, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. I'm not coming for their culture like that. If that's your culture. That's your culture. It is what it is. Um. So, uh, Most High has elevated women's position and has called for the man to be cultivated. So, the shift has been for this a portion of this that supports this but this also is bible based and this also feeds into the the theory of yin and yang and balance for and uh, for every action is opposite and equal reaction um the masculine and the feminine energy um and this book of the that's where i got that from it's, it's also a, a portion that supports this and the making of eve if i'm not mistaken is the title of that one um, but with that being said, is women were never meant to be, and, and to, you can look at the book of Genesis and when they ate up the fruit and all the curses that came with it. Um, but women were, their original tension in the making of a woman was never to be under the heel of men, under the reign of men. It was to be by his side by his side it was meant to be an apple opposite not in opposition so in so let me explain this thank you okay opposite opposition means to oppose okay um it was not meant to be and let me actually give let's use real definitions here why not right um Okay, it wasn't to oppose to be in resistance, to be in argument with. It was never meant to be with that. Opposite and equal re reaction and, and then the natural law sense as well too. It was meant to be to cover the gaps of what the masculine energy. So there's masculine energy and there's feminine energy. Both energies are essential. Like a battery, you need a positive and a negative charge to produce energy. This is, mm, thank you, sorry, um, but this, and you cannot do, you cannot get energy from pure positive charge. You cannot get energy from pure negative charge. You need both in order for the electricity to flow. Um, and with that, <laughs> it was meant in order to, for a proper flow, you need both sides. Both sides are 
equally important. One side is not lesser than the other in levels of importance or authority. There is an order to authority just to make sure that someone has the final say because if there's two sides and they kind of have different opinions and it's like someone has to get the final say so that you can be in flow again. But it's but the thing is to be in proper flow. I don't want to skip too far ahead. Um, but to be, there has to be someone, if there's like two different ways of doing things, let me put it this way. If there's two different ways of doing things, one person, they're staying same end goal, same end goal. One person wants to do it one way. One person wants to do another way. The thing is, is to listen to each person. And the one who has the final say is supposed to listen to all, each person who is affected by the, the by the decision and then take those things into account before making the decision, just so that there's no stagnancy. That's why one is giving the final say. One is given the final say to, uh, to make sure that there's no stagnancy, okay? That is the only, so when you say submission, when you want a woman who's in submission, that is, that is the, submiss the submissive part for the most part. It is like, okay, when there's two different ways, when it's a fork in the path, you can't just sit at that fork. So someone has to be the one who has the final say. And because of the qualities of the masculine, that is why it's traditionally the masculine that gets the final say. But that does not lessen or negate the feminine. And I'm getting there. Because the feminine has its own powers and its own reasons and its own its own mm, do, 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 do. its own do, 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 the word sorry I'm looking for the word <laughs> there are certain privileges that the feminine has that the masculine doesn't and vice versa so just because the masculine gets the it's traditionally used as a final say that does not take away the importance or the power of the feminine um and the reason why women's position has been raised to now women can speak up to say, hey, by the way, yes, we know. And then a lot of men have also admitted that maybe the position of women in the yesteryears, the past, was not the best position to keep them in. And maybe the powers that be and the systems that were put in place may have not been the best systems put in place. So some men are speaking up on that. But I feel like there's a lot of a, a lot of like, you know, when you go into like the different red pill talks and uh, and things like that um, and those and then that rhetoric, you're getting back to this idea of like, go back beneath me where you're supposed to be. And anytime you have a place where a, a dominant power is being and this is something you can see throughout history, if you study history and you study at the changing of empires, there's going to be a level of friction that's going to happen when the person who was in authority is now met by a, by what was underneath them now rising to become almost to become closer and equal footage, closer and equal footing. Some will be uncomfortable by that because it is if you if you revel in that power, then you will find it discomforting and you will find it threatening for those who were underneath you to come and rival you or be at the equilibrium with you. Those who do not find it threatening will see the benefits of it. Um, and I do see that just like, but even though women are raising in power, there are some levels, some areas when women have come here out of, and that's not quite, that's not their place either to be here. Unless you're, you're operating in feminine energy, like, okay, and it's not to put, you're not forcing it over the masculine energy or the masculine. And you're like, okay, we're just coming into our feminine and we're really excelling at coming into our feminine, but you don't use it to dominate over the mas masculine. Um, but it's not the feminine. It's not supposed to be up here over the masculine, neither the masculine over the feminine outside of final say, um, in certain and so you can keep going, so you can continue being fruitful, so you can continue thriving, so you don't, you're not at a standstill. That is the only time when you are here. And then in your areas of excellence, a so masculine is normally good for protecting, providing provisions. Um, and it's more tunnel vision. So in the feminine 
is a strategist. There's a lot, and I'm going to go in more detail about that, but she she's seeing multiple tunnels at the same time, but it's the masculine who is really good at this. At, once he's understanding all the different tunnels of using that to um, be like, okay, this is the one we should go down. And, but they're supposed to be in complement to each other. They are always meant to be and should be in complement to each other. And one is not greater than the other and never will be greater than the other. So, and the interesting is, I'm, I'm, I wrote this down after being downloaded this, after coming out of a prayer and a fast before reading this book. Um, and I'll link the book below. But before reading that book, this is what I, this was downloaded to me. Um, so, this is the reason why women position has been raised is to co is to cause the men's position where it has been stagnant in this power dominancy position for so many decades and millennia for it, it to cultivate into a place that is more elevated and this is meant to be an opportunity for growth and not an opportunity to make one more suppressed than the other um, and I'm going to say she for feminine and he for masculine in this case. She is no longer under the heel, but by your side. For where I have placed her, here from where I have taken her. This was done to remedy the pride of men. To humble him as an answer to the generations of cries from women and children and to prepare for the proper meaning of unity. Her place was always by your side. So that is something that was downloaded to me is that if you look at history, there's and even now, if you look at globally, there's still many crimes against women. There's, and then, this is not to negate there's crimes against men either. But in by large, by large, it's just been so. There's because of the position of women in the past, the crimes of and there because there's crimes against men and men on men. Okay, that's not negating that. But because of the position of women in most societies being underneath men, um, there wasn't much, many resources until re until now recently. You know, we're, we can fast forward to present moment in a little bit. There wasn't as many resources to remedy the cries of women and the children who were affected by it, by um, women and the children who were affected by it a lot of this power structure placement. Um, but yes, thank goodness. Thank most high that these things have changed are, are, are beginning to change in a lot of modern societies. Um, and there's still much more to be done with that. And um, the, the dynamic between masculine and feminine, feminine uh, men and women people is like that of like mother earth so think of a garden and the gardener so think about the relationship between the masculine and the feminine the man and the woman as the the gardener versus the garden okay um men are the planters and this is actually when you look at how nature works when even when you think about how babies are made, it is the same repetitive thing. Okay, so men are the planters and the women are the garden, the good soil. Um, and they're the men are the caretakers of the garden. So if you want a flourishing garden, then you have to make sure the seeds that you plant are, are good seeds. The way you water them, the way you tend and care for them are good. So. When you think about that relationship, it is no different from, and I'm going to get into different uh, ways this relationship was meant to work. 
So when you think about the gardener and the garden relationship, you can also see how this is repetitive and how nature works as well too. And with that being said, you see the role that the masculine is supposed to play in relation to the feminine. And the feminine, after the planter takes care of the garden, plants the seeds, is tending to the garden on a constant basis to make sure that the fruit is doing what it needs to do. It's growing, it's thriving. It's, it's in control of the environment, okay? And the garden itself, is the producer it is the so you have the tender and the producer the garden the feminine the feminine is what produces um based off a level of care and work that the caretaker is putting into the garden it is what it either will thrive and and give richness or you will get a very lame crop that season a very uh, you know unprosperous crop that season depends on how the gardener tends to its garden and that is going to be that is typically how it works okay now hmm, that's putting it because i know somebody's like you're putting a lot of responsibility on the masculine okay yeah that is true the masculine because you are the head you have a lot of responsibility with great power comes great responsibility and understand that with that power it is in servitude of of who was below you any great leader knows that they are first servant and they are the biggest servant every king is subject to its people every government is subject to its people even though our government i'm not gonna go into that is not really serving its people like that but that's another that actually i don't even think i'm gonna go down that road but yeah um but there's rules in place to deal with that but if you are not serving your people then you are not a good ruler and you, you do, and you are subject to being dethroned. Um, so that is what it is. That, that is just the, how the system works. Um, but with that being said, now it is the garden. The garden has to make sure that, that um, yes, as as it's being prevent because we're also even though it's an analogy we understand that the garden has a life of its own because it's a, its own person in this case it's an analogy to tie to what the masculine does and the feminine does what the the person who is in the masculine the person who is more in the feminine does because everybody has masculine and feminine in them um but in the relationship one it's going to take you have to kind of lean more into one side than the uh, and another for a proper working relationship with that being said, um, it is the garden's job, the feminist job, to make sure that it is maintaining its nutrient, whatever is being given to it, the nutrient-rich soil, the water, the sunlight, whatever is giving to it, that it produces fruit. That means that if this person is putting in work to get, make sure you're having everything you need to thrive, it is your job to make sure you thrive. Now, that's not to say that like if so that means whatever you need to do to learn to thrive, to take whatever you're given and to use it to the it's the best of it's um it's most optimal optimization to optimize it there we go <laughs> to optimize it to its almost optimal potential there we go um so that is your job as the garden to make sure that you are flourishing giving all the nutrients and all the love and care that you're given all the attention that you're giving that you are that whatever you're giving you're flourishing whatever's given so here's the deal if the gardener is giving poison to the garden, then it will most likely flourish in poison. If the gardener gives fruit and prosper to the garden, it will most likely flourish in those things too. Now, and this is in, this is how it's supposed to work. Okay. I'm just giving facts of how it was meant to work. <laughs> so, I do want to bring up this point too, and let me just double check notes to see as well. Okay, I want to give up this point too. Back in biblical times, as well as other cultures as well too, there's still a lot of cultures that practice this, and this is actually a good thing. Um, when you when you want to join in union with someone, 
each side has to there it's a contract we already know this um nowadays since the government got involved and it's 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 like in a division of properties it, that hasn't already pre been pre pre decided via prenuptial agreement um postnuptial agreement whatever um depending on back in those days when it was whole families deciding um or individuals when they're deciding the government started a good place to divide properties and assets when um when there was no agreement that could be reached so the government does have its place in unions so because there wasn't always a marriage license that you had to get at least in the, these united states um but other places you know they have the bridal price or it's sometimes it's the family the bride's family that pays i think in indian culture i think it's the bride's family that that pays when a lot of african in culture it's the um the husband's family that pays the bride um, so every cult, there's usually in a lot of, in especially older cultures, there is this exchange of assets in a marriage, in a union. And, um, that is because, um, you know, and each culture has its reasons why it's done. But if you notice in a lot of these older cultures too, there was also this, this kind of rule that was set in place whether it was written law or uh just kind of like a law that was understood culturally is that there were certain things that had to be put in place for one before one became a wife or a husband okay um you had to there were certain check marks that had to be checked off because they understood the strength what because marriage is a contract it's a covenant which is a contract there in any contract two parties each party has a role in certain promises and terms of an agreement that it has to meet in order for that contract to be valid and if it does not meet these terms or these conditions then a lot of times that marriage that that contract can be annulled or it would be counted as invalid or a breach of contract um so and that's and everything, there's nothing new under the sun. So if it happens, if it happens in one place, this also happens in another place because that is the marker and the stamp of how everything operates. So just like there's contracts in the natural, there's contracts in the spiritual covenant with um, the Most High when you get married or whatever your, your um, because a lot of times when you see the marriage ceremonies, whoever the higher power is in that culture, the ethnicity, they're usually asking it to bless the un union. So they're trying to cut a lot of times if there's a higher power, they're going towards the higher power and say, hey, bless this union. So you're getting, you're coming and you're announcing the marriage ceremony is to announce to the congregation so that they may hold you accountable to the, to the terms and agreements that you are stating that you will, that you will operate in, in order for this covenant, this agreement, this contract to stay valid. Okay, hope I didn't lose anybody with that. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make a short, quick version of that. If anybody was lost, it's agreement. It's a contract. Contract are written like you do this. Um, my job is in this contract. I agree to do X, Y, Z, L, M, N, O, P. And the other one person's like, okay, while you do those things, I'm gonna do A, B, C, um, E, F, G. Okay. So everybody has their duties, what they're saying that they're going to do. And they're like, and because we're doing these different things, we can come together and bring our different things together and form a union, a partnership. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope I put that in simple terms. And with that being said, a lot of ancient traditions would have to be that in order for two people to go into contract with each other, you had to follow certain, right? You had to get through certain qualifications. Some places you had to have a certain kind of job or, you know, you had to prove that you had income for a lot of times for men. Um, Cause a lot of more societies are male dominated than female dominated or equal, do equally dominated. But the party had to pr pr prove that there was financial stability 
um, one party had to prove that I'm sorry, I'm getting something nothing else. Okay. One party had to pr prove financial st stability, had to prove protection, had to prove, um, you know, whatever it has to prove, um, that it, provision, um, whatever it may be. The other party had to prove that it could, um, bear legacy or, you know, maybe not in the beginning, um, but that was a, that was something like that was usually written in the, in the, or really an understood thing in the agreement. Like there must be a legacy that comes through. Um, you must bring, you know, whatever it needs to be brought in order for the legacy. Cause usually older societies is very, all about the legacy. It was all about the children. It was all about carry on my name. <laughs> it was it was heavily influenced in that in a lot of older societies. So that was mainly the main goal of one party was to bring a, about a legacy and heir. Um, and, you know, more modern day, you, there's a lot of unions where having an heir is not necessarily the end all be all goal. Sometimes it's about achieving certain financial status, achieving certain uh, stature in society. Um, uh, there's a goal. There's usually going to be a goal. Uh, and the two enter into the un union to achieve a goal. Um, and with that being said, and then, so with that being said, it was, you had to have certain qualifications before you would gain the title of husband or wife. And in a lot of modern societies, we're not pre-vetting people before they become a husband or before they become a wife, which also leads to a lot of issues because people who are have the title wives don't necessarily need it. It's kind of like the whole idea of people saying just because people can have babies doesn't mean that everybody should have one. Not everybody's qualified to just because you have the operational functions to be a mother doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a great mother, vice versa for father. Um, just because you have the job title to be in position at that job doesn't mean you're the best person for that job. It's kind of like that. So we have a lot of people who were not prepared for the job and what it entails holding the positions. Um, yeah, and I'm going to leave that one there. <laughs> so... And then now I want to go into natural balance, okay? And I want to first say, I've said this multiple times, love is an action. It is something that you do. Because we are now going into talking about the union, but in marriage even more deeply. So marriage is a commit committed partnership. Those who claim their union before, each culture is going to have their own higher power that they submitted to, but I'm going to use for me and for this purpose is I'm going to use a yah, the most high. Yeah, have that. Um, so, and then the, they usually do this in front of others to serve as witness. And this was also done to keep them accountable to holding their side of what the contract was. So that's the reason why you have witnesses to say, hey, so if they try to finagle their way out the contract, it's like, oh no, we saw you say we saw you agree, sign the dotted line that you were going to do, fulfill these things for the contract. So that is why the witness thing is so important. Um, and uh, has to... Okay, so in every union has, especially the marriage union, the partnership union, the, you know, partnership relationship um, union has two sides. It is the emotional side and the business side. For any proper working, like marriage type, partnership type union, it will most likely, almost 99.9% .9 of the time, operate. it has to have two sides that are balanced. And that is business and emotional. Okay, so we understand the emotional side is that, you know, the love, the feeling of it. Um, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of plain, but you know, the lovey-dovey feelings, this person's my person. I love them so much. The way they just make me feel like the sky, the moon, the stars are shining in my honor because I, how I am so blessed to have this person in my life. That's the love side. Okay. When you give each other those, that, those feelings, when you give each other that security in those, in those feelings. 
And then the business side, it is the operation of the partnership. So it's like simple as you can look at it from the household. Who's doing the dishes? Who's doing the laundry? Who's better at it? Who is, um, whose job is it to mop, sweep, you know, keep up the house and so that it's thriving and maintaining, um, and it's having proper maintenance um when it comes to raising the kids who's a disciplinarian who is the you know one who says okay this person's gonna go to this school this person's gonna do this like you know there's a there's a business like there's you may not always have these rules right, written down it may just be an understood thing in your individual partnership and in your individual marriage um when it comes to who manages the finances, who brings in the money, like it's, it's, that's the business side of it. That is the operations of how do we keep this machine, this contract going and, and how do we keep it flourishing? How do we keep it moving fruitful? How do we keep it functional? You think about that in like the spiritual sense based off of the Christianity, Hebraic, Hebraic, um, relation. You could think one is the law and one is the spirit. Um, so like the spirit being the emotional side, the internal side, and the law being the function. So with that being said, I'm about to go into breaking down each role. Um, I'm going to use husband function, masculine function, feminine function, wife function. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to just title it like that, you know? Um, so with that being said, um, and I'm reading from the notes too, cause I don't want to go topic, but so there's specific functions that each has to do and, and their roles. As I said, it's a contract. Um, and they have to be played for them to function per usual user manual. So, there's a prop there's a just a proper function that's supposed to be done and when you read a job description it's like this job entails you have to do this 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 and this now we all understand that there's maybe more that has to be done once you get into that job there may be things that weren't listed into that job description but that's the basic the basics of the role it's when you take on a job and a husband is a job just like a wife is a job it is a title that you it is a title that you are granted when you enter into contract. Okay. So with that being said, um, the husband role is usually the provider and the protector. It is the one who is meant to love the other as an extension of themselves. And that's Bible basically. And this is also seen in a multitude of different, um, in my, in my research, I've also noticed that a lot of different religions, when they practice peace, wholeness, and balance, um, they also state that this is the case too. It's like, okay, provider protector is the role of the masculine, of the husband. And I am to love this person as an extension of myself, which means that it's the Bible scripture. Let me actually let me read it for a so Ephesians 5.25, this is part of that scripture, but I don't think it's the exact one I was looking for. But it's husbands love your wives as Christ has loved the church and he gave himself up for her. This, and that's Ephesians 5.25. When it says husband loves your wives as Christ loved the church, as Christ has given himself up for the church. So, and if you look at that, um... to love and I know that's one version but it's like to love your wife as as you would love yourself um so she's like to love for the masculine to take on the feminine as an extension of themselves but the husband is to take on the wife as an extension of himself so the same love care and that's why they say a man's or a husband's confidence wherever he's at it's going to be a reflection like she she, I'm saying she, and as in the wife role, is a reflection of him. So depends on his love and care that he shows for himself, and also and those who are related to him and those who, he, who he's in relation with. She's gonna reflect that. Um, 
because so if he shows care love and attention and he he gives not only does he give this to himself he's generous with that she's gonna reflect that um for the most part for the most part now there are some exceptions to the rule but we're not really dealing with exceptions to a rule we understand that that's like that's a common thing that some went some people who are operating as wives may be too wounded to be able to reflect whatever love and goodness and kindness they're getting and so there are some um exceptions to rules okay but we're just talking about general basics and one thing that is kind of been said a lot it's like you know for a, a man to get be provider and protector he has to be able to lay claim to the female he has to be like oh you're mine so therefore you're my responsibility to provide and protect for her. so i mean and this is that could, yeah um i don't want to argue that really because i did just i also i'm stating that you know she's not meant to be like an owned person by the masculine the feminine is never meant to be owned by the masculine but to stand in unison with um and i do understand that there's this um this idea that psychologically um in order for the masculine i'll i'll use him to also den to um note masculine he needs to be able to lay claim and be like you're mine you're my responsibility yeah, but there's there is a, a primal way to do that, and then there's more of an elevated way to still be able to to have that same. You're my responsibility. You're not less than mine, but as but as my role in this contract is to provide and protect. That does not make you less than me. That doesn't make you anything. Your role, your importance, your significant any less. It's just in order for me to fulfill this contract, my role as husband in this union to the best of my ability, that is also a duty that I've been assigned. Okay. Um, so, I, okay. So the husband is also meant to ensure that the others have provisions to sustain themselves in this role. And more important that the legacy, because a lot of it is really also about the main, the maintaining of the legacy, the seed, the children, the passing on the, of the name. Um, and then they want to make sure they have land to reside of sustain and or, and or resources, the knowledge that they need. And this is why the husband is to pour into the wife as he would himself for his seed and his legacy's well-being. Because the, the, they are an extension of husband. The feminine, the legacy that comes from the union is an extension of the husband. So if he's fulfilling his role correctly, he would make sure that they have all resources that's needed to sustain themselves. So in the absence of the husband, that the the wife, the feminine, the legacy can sustain themselves. Um, he's because this is just the proper role of the provider and the protector. He's going to make sure that they are not in lack if he's if he's in his role effectively and efficiently. Um. He's going to make sure they have the knowledge or whatever tools they need um, to be able to survive and maintain. Um, he's going to make sure that they are set for, and that's also the role of the father when it comes to children. You do, you instill as much as you can into them so that they can make sure by the time they get older that they have everything that they need to thrive and survive. That is essentially what that role does and like i said you're what you see mirrored in one in, in the husband role you can also like i said you can see it mirrored in the father role you can you can see it you can see these things mirrored in more than one area um and then also it's a role of service as i stated that any great leader because it is a leadership role in a sense of it does have a lot of authority and because it has been granted a lot of authority it is even more important even more essential that it does not pervert its authority that it serves the highest good of all those who are under its authority it has to make sure that every party who is under the authority 
is surviving and thriving. More importantly, not just surviving, but thriving. That in, in order to be a good leader, sorry, there's a vacuum going on. It feels like they're cleaning downstairs. So I'm going to do my best to talk a little bit louder. In order to be a good leader, one has to make sure that whoever they're in charge of, because if your if your charges, the peop, those who are under you, are in lack, that's a testament to your leadership. So if they do not have what they need, if they're not emotionally, if they're not getting the emotional support that they're needing, if they're not getting the love, the attention, the financial resources that they're needing, that is a direct testament to your leadership in most cases, okay? It's like if they're doing everything that they need to do with whatever you're providing them to help them survive and thrive, then they should not be in lack. Um, so because it's in service and because this is a servitude position and it's the highest service and it's also a badge of honor. Anytime that you're in, in a leadership position, it is a badge of honor, but there is a level of the, the politics in it means that you have to make sure that in order to preserve your throne, your leadership, your crown, your authority, your jurisdiction, that you are maintaining it and keeping everyone happy. Because if people are not happy, and history has shown this, as I said before, revolt will happen. <laughs> and let's see here. And that is the burden of being in a leader. That is, it's a burden. It's a beautiful, fun, it, wonderful position to be in. Yes, it comes with a lot of power and responsibility, but it's also, that is also the burden of it. And with every higher position, there's also going to be a level of, of weight that comes with it. And that's just one thing that comes with it. So if you do not like, you cannot argue about being in pos a position of power, but then being devoid of the burden that comes with it. It's, it is foolish to argue that. It is like, put me in a position, but do not give me the responsibility. It is that anytime you see in history, when you give someone a position of power and they are foolish with it they don't want to be responsible for the people for it, it will cause it would cause turmoil it would cause war battles it will cause friction it will cause arguments and it will cause a division so understand that if you want that position if you want to be an authority figure that is well respected you have to make sure you are maintaining by providing certain benefits by you being in that position to those who are underneath you. Because if, so, if you are not, what is the purpose of them raising you to that position? Why should they keep you in that position if it does not, it, if it does not benefit them any? The role is meant to benefit the wife's role, the, fe the feminine's role, so that she, wife, feminine, may maintain the legacy and ensuring that the entire family has what is needed emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Okay. Um, so that's pretty, for the most part, in conclusion of the husband's role. Now let's get to the wife's role. The wife's role is, a con is to be in partnership and in agreement with the husband's service. So if he's doing his best to serve the best in the providing in the making sure that pr there's protection for and provisions for the spiritual the highest spirituality wealth mental stability emotional stability um of the entire family then you need to be in support of that that means anything and everything you do is in support of that um that means that the husband will look for ways that he can best be in provision and protection of his family. Um, the wife supported that. So providing ideas of being able to aid that vision, that um, role. And it needs to be in accordance of the, um, of the guide light or the God light then within. So the husband, and this is basically, this is also in, in, in Hebraic, traditions too it is like the husband's supposed to be in, uh, submitted under under the most high and then the wife is submitted to the husband it would not be dis 
it would not be at a disadvantage for the wife to submit under the husband because he's submitting under the most high and the most high would have all of everybody's best interest at heart it would take into account the um so the higher power would take into account of the highest best interest of everyone who is under the leadership of the husband and if the husband is operating in that in that guidance from the most high then sh then wife she would then be able to submit to that so she's not submitting to the husband just because he's husband be just because he titles that he has that role in that title she's submitting to the guidance that he is taking from the most high from the higher power okay let's let's be clear with that so when a lot of uh a lot of men are saying it like i want to want someone who's going to submit to me what are you submitting to that she must submit to because if you are not submitting to something that's going to be for their highest the highest good of everyone who is under that authority then she is not out of line wife is not out of line female energy is not out of line to submit to not to disagree to submit to you that's not out of line um because who would want who will willingly submit to something because who in their right mind would submit to something that is disadvantageous to themselves that is suicide that is self-harm that is not loving oneself so it is against an act of her being in love with uh, loving herself being for her highest good being for the highest good of the the children that have come with for have come from you you're the union or any children that she has um to submit to an authority that is not for her best and highest good okay let's just so hopefully that just rebuttals a lot of the i want submission i want submission if you want submission make sure it's not coming from a wounded place make sure that you want submission because you want to make sure you are leading anyone who is under your submission to their best selves to them highest selves so and to their ultimate best lives and you yourself as well benefiting that that means it needs to be beneficial for everyone involved if they submit to your authority okay um because if not then it's a dictatorship and no one who does not benefit from a dictatorship will willingly run and say, hey, sign me up for your dictatorship. I would love to get all the pain, the emotional turmoil that comes with being involved in your dictatorship. I would like to be a citizen under the regime of your dictatorship. Like, there's no one who does that. Who does that? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, if, if it's not going to benefit them, if you're not in a way that's like, if you're ruling in a way that is like, oh, I want my people to flourish then they're not going to be willingly raising their hand to say, hey, sign me up for whatever you got going on over there. Okay? Um, so, and let's go back to the wives, because we're still on wives, but I don't, I'm not coming from attacking, attacking the husband, the masculine, because um, I, as I said, the masculine has a grave responsibility. It's a beautiful responsibility of the masculine if he, if he um, is operating, that person is operating in it correctly <laughs> okay um da -da 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 -da, with a crimson light, light. okay so the wife's job the feminist job is to not be against the guidance uh and the decisions of the husband and the masculine if they if they are making decisions with the best interests of them in mind but there's there's some more to that okay there's more to that it's coming. Here we go. Um, just like it's not, just like he is not to be against her intuition. Okay. Someone once said that the wife is the neck. The man may be the head, but the wife is the neck. And I understand the neck is where you turn. So it gives you, you, this may be the place where all the decisions and everything come, but the direction is decided by this. Okay. Um, is, is ultimately decided by that. So he he's not to be against her intuition and she's not to be against her own intuition. She needs to be in tune with her intuition. 
and in these because it needs to be the in accordance of the divine light the most high the um hold on okay so i'll talk a little bit louder it's gonna be background noise it's <laughs> so i'll just talk a little bit louder um so um and it needs to be and her intuition feminine energy's intuition wife's intuition needs to be in accordance with the with the higher power the most high the divine um and I do want to make this quick note, this disclaimer here. I've said it before, but I really want to make sure I really hone in on this. This is, if both are operating in the guidance of the most high spirit and the divinity of the most high, the higher power, then neither of these would ever be in, an op in opposition to each other. That means they would be in balance and harmony at all times because they are operating with the guidance they're both using their strengths to serve the unity of both of them they are both putting their so in the terms of contracts they're both saying hey i'm better at doing this you're better at doing this let's put ourselves together and be great and dominate because we are both using our strengths and so that we can we can come together on a common goal okay um, the role of the wife is to serve the second line of defense as well, too. So the husband is providing protector, but if it's any in the event that anything happens to the husband role and he's provided enough resources for them to sustain themselves, given them, he's done everything he needs to do to set them up. She is now kind of taken on first line of defense. So now she's she's set, so she's not necessarily provider and protector anymore because that is what husband did, even if husband is gone wife role is she's you she's gonna now allocate the resources she's gonna make sure that they're being used um she's still operating in wife role even if in husband's absence so if husband has set up his the wheel um it, uh, whatever he's done he's set everything up so in case it is in the event that he hasn't he's not absent whether it's business trip whether it's departed from this life it does not matter he has he has provided enough substance for his his family that she wife um feminine can still operate and in, in that in that area okay without any and now she's now protector of the legacy okay legacy children I'll, I'll keep saying that for anybody who may be confused um and it's to help the seed grow still going to support whatever the husband has left for them um, so on another, another analogy is the husband's like a soldier, but it is also, it's a two part for the husband. It's like a soldier who's on the battlefield and has to make quick decisions. And the role of the wife is like the general in war. She's the battle strategist. The feminine, the wife is the battle strategist who sits down and makes sure that the soldier who, um, is, is set up for success. So wife, feminine energy, she, um, using those three to describe this, this title, um, or I'm just using those three cause these are the, the pronoun is just usually what's tied to this title, but it's feminine energy wife. Okay. It's also a title. It's also an energetic. Okay. But there's also, I'm using pronoun she, just like I use pronoun he for a husband masculine, because that's usually what's assigned to that energy. And that's a, that, that title usually, okay? Because people may have their own free will and their own decisions to make. These, that pronoun is not always assigned to that, okay? That's just disclaimer. We understand that. We know that, but I'm just putting it out there, okay? Oh, Wife is like the battle strategist. The feminine is like the battle strategist. She's going to note the best ways of success to, for each battle plan that is being presented. So she's going to look at it and say, oh, okay, so if we do it this way, she's going to look at the goal. What's the goal we're trying to reach? What do you have? Okay, we don't have that much food supply. So I think if we only have this limited food supply, we're going to have to plan it this way. Okay, what do you have? 
okay, we don't have that that much resources as far as money to fund this. Okay, so if we're gonna do that, if you if this is the goal, this is what you have given me for, for protection and provision, this is what we're gonna have to do. So she's gonna be the master strategist for the most part. That is usually what she, um, the wife role, the feminine is usually better at. Um, and so um, do, 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 do. so the so the soldier submits to the general um in, in its strategist job but the general also does make sure that everyone it, it divides the provisions so it's the one who manages the provisions as well um but along with that the general the the husband the masculine not only is the soldier it is um he also the commander in chief which means he gives he gives the order of hey we're going to war or hey we're we got here's the vision um and, but commander in chief was also taking an account of again it's in service any order that it gives is in service to the collective of the entire unit that means that it's taking into the needs desires of the wife the children and everyone involved under its its um authority and saying okay since this person wants to do this this person wants this and we y'all need these are your needs here's the new direction that we're going in and so then the battle strategist says okay that's the direction this is these are ways in which we can do this or given the, the resources that we have given the provisions that's been provided this is ways that we can do this and then and i think that this would be the best course of action to uh, to, to take this would be the best um, plan to follow and he's going to be in submission to that intuition because she's in touch with the highest that her higher self in touch with the um divinity within and the the most high and in that area and he's trusting that that from um the feminine and the feminine is not taking away the authority of the masculine okay um and, and then she, and the feminine is also going to, in, in any plan that the masculine presents, the feminine, the wife, will find areas that are underserving. She's going to be like, okay, the wife, the feminine is going to be like, okay, there's a hole in that plan. You need to tweak it this way. Because she, she is serving his desire, his ruling on making sure that the collective has the best um, the most optimal situation to provide and to survive and thrive. So any times that she uses her intuition, the wife, the feminine uses their, the intuition that is naturally stronger in the feminine, it's going to serve the masculine in that area. I've been like, okay, that is a good plan. I like where the vision's going, but let's keep in mind that this is a whole, this is a whole, this is a whole. But this is how we can combat that. This is how we can address that. This is how we can go through that. That is where he, the masculine, will trust the feminine. Mm -hmm. And this will allow the husband role to do what it must to be in excellence. And it's important to know that the husband is also the co uh, commander in chief as well as the soldier. Okay. This, they are working in unison. They are working in partnership. They are a power couple. Mm -hmm. It's a power unity. Okay. And the wife role increases, multiplies whatever is it is given. Mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, and emotionally. And if it's in its role effectively and efficiently. And each role is important. Each role is needed. One is not lesser or greater than the other for um, what is a head without a body. Okay. Masculine head. Feminine is all the rest of the functions of the body. You cannot, I mean, what is a head going to do if it don't got a body? What's a body going to do if it don't got a head? In short, these are the functions of marriage and partnership and the act of a love union traditionally. Okay. This is the... This is the foundation of it. And this is to ensure the protection, the establishment is to protect the establishment so that it runs like a well-oiled machine. And then it also provides fruit, the seed, the legacy, the children. And it provides most abundant 
fruit, not just in quantity, but just as in the most, it's like the fruit that it, that it produces. The children, the legacy that it will come out of it will be a legacy that is, that's able to sustain itself. Um, whether it's in the children, physical children that they have in the union, whether it's in the businesses that, that comes from the union, whether it's in the abundance that comes, anything that comes out of this union, this is why it's set up this way so that the union's fruit, whatever comes out of it, it is, it's thriving. It is the best produce that comes out of it. And... As I say that we can all do a job, um, but we can we can all have a title. We can all do a job, but there's a difference between showing up for a job and doing the job and then showing up in excellence and fulfilling your job roles better and, the, and making sure that you're going exceedingly and beyond what is expected and that you're and that you're investing in a way that produces the best fruit. And the feelings that come along with being in the functional side is that if you're operating in good function, if you have a good foundation of laws and rules, because I always said, and I, I'm going to do a T for the week, I say that boundaries are the keepsakes of relationships. Certain, having a certain understanding of this is how my function, this is what I do, and being consistent and persistent in that, in a relationship, is what helps um, which helps keep it going and helps it thrive. And so if you have these, the rules, the, the um, rules of engagement put in place, the roles that each person will function in put in place, then it's easy for the emotional atmosphere to survive and thrive. Those, like, cause that's the main thing, survive and thrive. Um, it's easy for those emotions of the love, the warm, fuzzy, dusty feelings to be in place because each person is doing their part to serve the union and is to serve the highest good of themselves and all those they're involved with. So it's easy to have a, a, um, a union that is thriving and full of love and stability and um. In, in all the warm, wonderful feelings that come with it. And I wanted to, I'm sorry, I was reading notes, but I wanted to put this into place. So we talked about how the role of the husband and wife are job titles, like the role of the husband is a job title, the role of the wife is a, what is a job title. And we talked about how with these job titles in a lot of uh, societies, um, more more ancient societies, you had to prove your, you had to be, show yourself approved. That means you had to have certain things in place before taking on these titles a lot of the times, right? <clears throat> and um, and the, you had to prove that you could do the job, you could maintain these specific job functions in order to gain this title um, of, of husband or of wife. And with that being said, um, it also mirrors this, bi this biblical principle of that any time that you gained a new title, a new, a new job, a new, um, a new hat, a way of being, um, something that you were entrusted to handle and to do. Oftentimes it came with that was a new name. So the title as in wife, the title as in husband, that is now a new name that you will be called. And that is now, so your name is Zachary, the husband, um, Rebecca the wife and like you know you're now Rebecca but you're also wife you're now Zachary but you're also husband um and it can't any but it came with a new level of responsibilities a new with also now you have been entrusted with this and since you have been entrusted with this this is how you're now expected to operate so in a and I'm using husband and wife titles masculine feminine um, in function. I'm using it in function 
Um, energetically, they are different. They are supposed to be in a yin-yang relationship. One cannot exist without the other. And between the two, there, there's a natural energy. There's a natural flow that comes between. When one is, when one person is operating in one energy and the other person is operating in the other, there's naturally energy that can now be created, a natural flow, a natural way of being. Um, there's a reaction that happens in the middle, you know, because these two are operating in these energies that now there's energy flow between them, okay? As I've stated before. And I do want to reiterate again that this is not to negate any private opinions. This is just simply saying, hey, this is how the foundation was meant to be laid. This is how this, the, this before it was perverted, which means taken out of its original context, this was how the operation, the user manual says it is to be done. Um... And across cultures, across religions, this is how it's meant to be. And because it's all, even no matter, no matter what religion, culture you may be, you are still subject, subjugated to a divine order, a divine law, a divine way of being, a divine operating system. Okay, if you live in this reality, if you live in this plane, if you live in this natural system, there are just a way things move. And this is just to say, hey, this is just the way things move. Um, everybody's individual opinions is just that, an individual opinion. This is not to negate that you have an individual opinion, whether it's opposing or in support. This is just simply saying you are entitled to that. You have great that you have an individual opinion. I'm not here to argue that. It is just to simply say, hey, this is how a flower grows. Hey, this is how the wind blows. Hey, this is how rain happens. It is... And to, uh, to get rid of a lot of the argument that's like, because a lot of this argument is not knowing how to properly, it's because so many people are bringing their own ideas to the table of this is how it works. And then everybody is going to have an individual plan of how it works in their individual households, okay? This is just the foundation and the ba basics. Like, no matter where you go there, when you build a house, the foundation has to be laid. Now, every everywhere you go, um, there's still going to be a foundation. But the foundations, because of that specific area, the temperament of that area, the cultures, um, the culture, the climate, the foundation may be laid a little differently. And, okay, I got to be very careful when I say that. There's the common concept that in the order to build a house, there, there's a foundation that's needed in order to build a stable dwelling. Um... Now, every area will have their different materials and sources that they use to build that foundation. But at the end of the day, a foundation is needed. This is just a general foundation that I just broke down of how these um, unions work. And it's like in, in order to have an effective union, an effective contract, an effective marriage, uh, an effective partnership. One will take on in, in, in love partnerships and um, intimate partnerships and marriages and things like that. One will take on one role. Another will take on another role. And typically one will have to lean towards this role more and another one will lean towards this role more. And that is just what you will see no matter the union. So with that being said, um, if this turns out to be another part, then I will do another part. Uh... But I just been authorized to release this because, like I said, this has been something I've been praying and fasting on for a while, and I've finally been able to release it. I hope that this provides healing. It, it answers a lot of questions: what the role of the feminine, the masculine, is supposed to do, the wife, the husband, is supposed to do in these intimate unions and relationships. And helps with a lot of the friction that's being, that's there. Uh, it is my desire to see that there's less arguing and less pointing of the fingers and less people who are walking around wounded. And then it, it, it is my desire to help them heal and start the healing process. And when you are entering into these relationships, um into these contracts that yes, you're going to have to find the, the flow that works for your individual relationship, contract, partnership. 
because not every flow is going to look exactly the same as the other. We're not cookie cutter people, so therefore no relationship would be cookie cutter. But to give a good proper foundation which to lay on your rules of rule of engagements and how things will operate in your relationship. And to get rid of a lot of the this idea of one party trying to tell who who is trying to tell another party how they're supposed to operate. Every it is not for the masculine to tell the feminine how to operate because they are more in tune to the masculine. It is not for the feminine to tell the masculine how to operate because they are going to be more in tune to the feminine. It is for them to each say, hey, this is what I operate in. This is my strengths. And they should be respected as that. And this is what I operate in. These are my strengths. And this should be respected as that. And then you can find who is the best match for your strengths on, on the other side. <laughs> that is all it is. That is all it is. And hopefully this adds to a new healing that can happen because I'm over the war. <laughs> I'm over it personally. It is annoying. It is, it is spiritually draining. It is energetically draining. And it is frustrating if you give it too much time and space. And all I hear is a bunch of wounded people saying this is how this party should stroke my wounds and heal me because why why you shouldn't do that because that's not going to help me heal no it's your responsibility to, to heal stop pointing at everybody else to heal it's your responsibility to heal and it's great when you have someone who is like oh let me help you heal let me be someone who helps you on this journey of your healing but you have to realize that you are the one who has to drink they are only there to make sure that you can get the drink. So whether they give you a cup, whether they make sure that you have a straw, but you still are the one who in who has to drink the water. Um. So I, I'm going to end that here. My goal is that people can be in loving, meaningful relationships. Devoid of hurts and pains that they are not actively healing from that is full of abundance and happiness because that helps in your journey of yourself. And I, in order to enter in these types of relationships, division is not going to aid it. So I have been given this message to share through me taking this time to spiritually get in tune and praying through praying and fasting to dive into this topic. And if I am to dive into it again, I will. But as of right now, there's nothing that says I should need, I need to go into it. This is just me presenting basic facts um, of how things are meant to work. I am not a relationship guru, nor do I plan on being one. But I understand the importance of relationships. I understand the balance of relationships. Um, in study, um, through understanding leadership tactics, I have actually studied this, been credited, <laughs> I have degrees in psychology, um, with more minors in psychology, but mainly degrees in um, leadership studies. And leadership is also in how you relate to others. So, with that being said, seeing that these monumental flaws that are happening, they are very cumbersome. And I really do hope that many who are pointing the finger at others and what they need to do, although they may be right, can start to really look at their part that they play. And we can see a change in this war between men and women. That's the one we're addressing right now. This war between the masculine and versus the feminine. Because one cannot be without the other. 
And the sooner that we realize that we cannot be in opposition, that we are stronger together, that we are better together, and everybody's together will differentiate depending on your relationship, um, the better. That is the better for all of us, for all of us as a collective, as, pe as people sharing this collective reality um, on this earth. Is healing for all of us. So hopefully we can stop the hate, be better, and be in more unison so that we can flourish and procreate. And if it's not our desire to procreate, to just flourish and thrive. And with that, my kind of design, designing your own kind of life. Never forget to dream. And I love each and every one of you. And bye until next time.